God for us today. So, Brother Diamond, would you please come and give him a good God bless you welcome this morning. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I want you to know you can't find this at Walmart. Come on, somebody. They don't sell this down at the corner store. You can't even get this in a peel bottle. Except a gospel. I want you to know, uh, you know, brother, I, I loved your testimony. You know, I was, I, 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 they said I was mentally off too. You know, we got a good testimony. They said Jesus was crazy. Yeah. You know, I, people tell me all the time, say, you crazy. I said, thank you. Come on, somebody. I want you to know God has come to set the captives free. You know, nowadays, they, they, they try to diagnose all of us. Come on, they start in school. We believe you have ADD. We didn't have ADD when I was going to school. If they'd have diagnosed me when I was in school, I'd have had A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. <laughs> They'd still be trying to find a cure. Somebody, don't laugh so hard, you crazy too. Turn around and tell somebody, say, I'd rather be here than North Korea. Is that you, Priscilla? Get up and hug my neck, girl. Come over here. Hallelujah. I love you. Diane told me if I saw you to give you a hug. We love you. Praise God. Boy, she's come a long way since the first time I saw her. Sitting in a wheelchair. Yeah. I, I, I got your testimony on my phone. Everything w was wrong with you. Of course, now you're worse off than you ever was. But yeah, got more things wrong with you now than you had back then. But they're all good things, see? Yeah, it's good. It's good. I, I, I thought the pastor didn't love me no more. He ain't brought me by your place to get one of them. Get, get one of them. Uh, 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 yeah, cow zones thing. You just flip over and everything's in it. Can I get a good amen? You know, everybody's singing. I, I love to sing. I, I can't sing good as y'all, and I sure can't sing. Where, where's Alicia? Where'd she go? I sure can't sing like Alicia. Boy, I least, man, I love Alicia singing. Boy, you feel it. But I, I, you know, I try to sing. See, when I sing, you see, when Alicia and, and, and Pastor Nim sing, they bless you. They just, ooh, just soothe. I thought I was listening to Frank Sinatra when he started off. And, 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 and uh, you know, just soothe. But when I sing, see, devils come out. See, when I sing, I torment the devil right out of you. Come on, somebody, shout hallelujah. I want to walk and talk with Jesus each and every day. I want my life to be an example for him in every way. I want to treat my brothers a way that Jesus wants me to. For he said, do unto others as I would have him do under you. I want him to shine me with his blessings from up above and to rock me and rock me and rock me in the cradle of his love. I want him to lead me and guide me in everything I say and do. I want him to use me and use me. I sure, well, anyhow, I forgot the rest of it. Hallelujah. I do, don't you? What a wonderful counsel of mighty prince of peace is he. And all I want each day is just a closer walk with thee. Oh, I love him, I love him, I love him. And I know, and I know he loves me. Somebody shout hallelujah. See, most people have to sing that song like this. I want to walk and talk with Jesus each and uh, every Sunday. What about Monday? What about Tuesday? What about Wednesday? What about Thursday? What about Friday? 
What about Saturday? I want to walk and talk when Jesus is eating every Sunday. Because <laughs> I need him in my life. Oh, God, would you help me? Shut up. Call 1-800-WAM-WAM. I want you to know every, every day I get up, hell gets nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I got up this morning, they was running around there uh, trying to hurt themselves. Because you see, the devil gives out assignments. Come on. The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. See, you, you're his target. And every morning they have a roll call. All right. Who's going to attack Sally Sue today? I will. I'll attack her. Who will go after Billy Bob? Oh, uh, give me Billy Bob. I'll knock him out today. Who wants to torment Hank? I will. Who wants to make uh, 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 Mary Jane ha have a panic attack? I will. Who wants to go after David Diamond? Ah! 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 Don't none of them want, my, uh, want to come after me. Somebody shout amen. You know why? Because when they knock on my door or they come and whisper things to me, I said, get thee behind me, Satan. I want you to know you're under my feet. I'm more than a conqueror. Hallelujah, I can do all things. Let me tell you, you come to torment me, I'm going to torment you. Ah! The Bible said resist the devil. And he'll what? Say it again. Say it again. Yeah, can can y'all say flee? flee? That's better. No, what we do, the devil comes along, but you don't feel good this morning. I know what I didn't get up. I didn't sleep well. You instantly begin to agree with it. You know, you didn't sleep well last night. You don't, and, and, and you, don't, you don't have to go to church every Sunday. Yeah, that's right. No, every time the devil comes by. I do this all the time. See, the devil wants to talk to me you, all the time. The devil wants to talk to you all the time. Just get a chair. Just say, let me tell you something. Sit down there. You want to talk to me? Go ahead. I'm going to listen to everything you got to say. Then I'm going to torment you. I'm going to preach to you. Guess what? He don't have nothing to say to me. He leaves. I was in Dallas, Texas. I was in Dallas, Texas at a hotel. Had a Baptist brother staying in my same room. We, we was at, a, we was at a, 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 a business meeting. And so uh, Baptist, Baptist guy was rooming with me. Well, I got a phone call. Joe, and, and, and Diane says, Diane said, David, I said, yeah, what, what's up? She said, uh, uh, our neighbor's trying to kill his son uh, 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 with a knife out in the yard. I said, what? And, and uh, uh, she said, yeah. I said, well, that's all right. I'm going to take care of that right now. So I pulled the chair out in, in the room, you, you, you know, there in the hotel room. I said, come over here, devil, and sit down in his chair. That Baptist got up and come sit down in it. <laughs> Scared him half to death. <laughs> I said, I'm not talking to you. Get out of the chair. <laughs> he said, oh, oh okay. <laughs> He's, he's sitting over on the edge of the bed, you know, and, and I said, let me tell you something, devil. I bind you up right now, in the, and, and Diane was on, 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 uh, on the other phone. I said, I bind you up right now. You can't stay in my neighborhood, you foul devil, you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I command that father to get off his son in the name of Jesus. And then not only that, I command that devil to move. I want you to know, I said, Diane, what happened? She's looking out the window while I'm praying. 
She said, all of a sudden, he just jumped up and ran down the road. I said, well, good. He's trying to find another house because I told him to move. I want you to know two weeks later they moved. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that Baptist, that Baptist, he said, man, what was you doing? I said, I'm doing what the Bible says. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. How many of you know we fight not against principalities and powers and rulers? Of, come on. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, and, and, and wicked spirits in high places. Let me tell you something, honey. This is a warfare. Can I get a good amen? amen. Quit listening to the devil. He'll start out whispering to you. And how many of you know he'll send somebody along to agree with him? In the, in the natural. See, I like what y'all said, what everybody's been saying. It's by faith. We're singing it by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. When I first got born again in 1971, I didn't know nothing about that Bible. I thought Job was the first book in the Bible. That's how much sense I had. Uh, you know, being raised in America, you would think you knew Genesis was the first. I thought Job was the first book in the Bible, and I thought it was Job. Come on. You, come on. J-O-B. What is that? That's a job. He said, Job. You don't, go, you don't go into a store and say, hey, I'm here to interview for a Job. I'll never forget, I took that Bible and I began to read it. I, ran, I read the King James. See, I was an old country boy. I was raised where we had our own little pigs and a few cows and, you know, 700 chickens. And, and uh, 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 my, 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 my anointing was, was to clean the mess off the eggs, the chicken mess off the eggs. Nasty thing. But that's still what I do today. I clean the mess off Christians. And most of them are chickens. Church is full of chickens. You, you'll catch that in a minute. Chicken? You know, when they, people wouldn't do anything. What's the, what's the matter? You're a chicken? Church is full of chickens. I'm here today. I hope you go crazy for God. I mean, just take that word and believe it and go attack the kingdom of the devil. God has loosed us. Come on. He said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy so that you will lay hands on the sick and you will cast out devils and you will set the captives free. I tell you, when I first... So I read that book. Brother Jerome, I read that book and, and, and I laid it across my chest. And, and I'll never forget, it took me six months to read it all. You know, a jackass talking in the Bible. Come on. An axe head floating on top of the water. Axe head don't float on top of the water. I used to chop wood. Come on, somebody. And, and, and you read all these weird stories. Did you know there was, uh, I, 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 read, uh, I read the first uh, 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 story, and I thought he was an acid head in the Bible, a prophet. He took his hair, read it, prophet in the Bible, cut his hair off, chopped it, threw it up in the air, chopped it in seven different, and it blew in seven different directions. I said, dear God, there's a dope head in the Bible. And, and you read all these stories, and it just don't make no sense to the natural man. Can I get a good amen? So I'm reading this, and I said, Lord, have mercy. So I laid it across my chest. I said, God, I have read this whole book, and I don't understand nothing. And this is what God told me. Not an audible voice. He said, I never ask you to understand it. I ask you to believe it. I said, what? He said, that's right. I asked you to believe it. I said, that's all I got to do. I don't have to understand because these, these stories are wild. 
the natural man. That's reading the Bible said, the natural man receiveth not the things of God, for they are foolishness unto him. See, smart people have a hard time walking by faith. Because it just don't make no sense. Come on. But that's where faith comes in. You just believe it. So, ah, man, I changed my whole life. I said, all right, I'm going to do it. And he said, go lay hands on the sick and you shall raise the dead. I said, Lord, I know where they're dying. they in the hospital. they in the ICU. Intensive care. I said, I'm going up there. And I walked in them, you know, in the intensive care unit. They said, Who are you? I said, I'm a holy roller. They just look at you, you know. And they said, You who? I said, Don't worry, I got the ghost. Now, about that time, they're thinking I've done escape from a mental institution. <laughs> and they said, well, what are you here for? I said, uh, th these people dying? She said, most of them's in comas. I said, I'm going to pray for them. God told me to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. She said, oh, you're a preacher? I said, yeah. She said, okay. So I went over to the man in the bed. My first one, my first person I prayed for who needed resurrection and you know they had they had him all on the machines and the nurse was there and and the, <clears throat> you know the machine the the, the one that kept up monitoring was going, beep, 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 beep. you know the heart monitor you know his heart was beating beep, beep. so I went over to him full of faith hallelujah I said in the name and I was gonna say in the name of Jesus and, and when I said in the name that sucker flatlined that, cold blue cold blue cold, get out of the way cold blue man I'm I'm standing over I said well you know I told myself I said well I think it would be a good time to leave now <laughs> you know and I was a little bit depressed you know, because the devil, he got on the elevator with me. Hello. Ha! 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 You in trouble now? You killed him. You're going to be in trouble now. You uh, First one you prayed for, you killed him. He died. What you going to do? I said, I ain't going to do nothing. He's dead. What can I do? I'm having a conversation. Most people thought, you know, if they'd have been on the elevator, they would have said, here's a nutcase talking to himself. Anyhow, you know, you're supposed to do that. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Come on. You ought to get up every morning and talk to yourself. Go to the mirror. Woo! 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 I didn't know God could make anything this good looking. Lord, have mercy. You're blessed. You ain't going to catch me going to the mirror and saying, My God, you ugly. Today I will do what God calls me today. Today I will be anointed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I'll walk out of this house today looking for somebody to lay my hands on. I'm going to find somebody that wants to hear the gospel, and if they don't want to hear it, I'm going to tell them anyhow. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. Say, well, I, I don't have your personality. Oh, they ain't got nothing to do with it. Did you bring your lips with you today? How many of you brought your lips with you? Yeah, they wasn't like false teeth. You didn't, didn't have to get over in the glass and get them. Come on. Your lips is a permanent fixture. And the Bible said, Lord, open my mouth and my lips will show your praise. Somebody slip your hand up and say, I'm going to praise him every day of my life. Yes, I he is as south, for yes, I am. <laughs> So anyhow, you know, I, I got over that real quick. <clears throat> I said, well, I'm going back tomorrow. So I, I prayed for the next. She, when, when, I, when I got up there, the same nurse was working the shift because I went about the same time of day. She said, I, 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 it's you? Are you here to pray again? 
I said, yeah. And she said, well, I hope you have better results. I said, well, that's God's business. So I went over to a bed, you know, beep, beep, beep. I got, I got to pray, though. I said, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> ah, in the name. Uh, see, I wasn't no flattery, pl you know, prayer. And, uh, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, the great and wonderful, mighty God who flung the stars out in the universe, named them Pluto, Venus, and Mars. See, this brother's praying right now. Hurry up. <laughs> this brother right here said, my God, get through with this. But see, God's doing something special for you while I got my hand on you. He la 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 basito poco shomoha. Oh, yeah. See, because look at here. See, there's power in them babies. Yeah, everybody hold your hand up and say, there's power in them babies. Oh, yeah, your hands. Your, see, you need to start believing this. He said for you to go lay your hands. Well, what if nothing happened? What if something does? Because it sure ain't going to happen without you doing it. So I, I, I was there and I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, and I, I, I think I just started speaking in tongues because I don't, I don't pray in English a whole lot. Father, in the name of Jesus, he tell a little bo satala. Oh, I was, I was, I, I, I got to tell you the truth though. He la 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 la. You know, I was watching the beeper. Shut a little beep, beep. I said, "Ooh, I've made a connection here. He's still here." <laughs> he died the next morning. I said, well, I'm getting better at this. Went back. It was a new nurse. She said, are you the one? <laughs> you know what they're talking about? So I, I went in there and I prayed for another one. Father, in the name of Jesus. Three days later, they died. That encouraged me. I said, instantaneous, next morning, three days. Progress. The first seven people I prayed for died. Slip your hand up and say, thank God I wasn't in his early ministry. <laughs> Can I get a good amen? I tell you what, why don't you give the Lord a good old clap offering? Come on. I love coming to church. And I just want to encourage you. That was 46 years ago. Hallelujah. Brother, I still got as much fire as I did on that Friday night when God slapped them cigars out of my mouth, Budweiser out of my hand. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want you to know I've never lost a step. I've never lost my fire. And I'm not losing my fire. Too many people, they just kind of, you know, just kind of, uh, 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 yeah, whatever. Where's your excitement? God ain't changed. No, we get to the place where we know enough. And God blesses us. Come on. And we're just like the children of Israel. We soon forget. But every day of my life, I get up, I say, thank you, Lord. That could be me on the streets. That could be me in a hospital. That could be me in a cemetery. But by His grace and His mercy, 
He saved me, hallelujah, and I'm going to tell the whole world. <laughs> Glory to God, every time I get a chance, uh, I, I, I'll go into restaurants uh, and uh, we'll be ordering food or what. I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus. Uh, I'm going to make a scene somewhere along the line. I'm going to ask them, do you have the Holy Ghost? Uh, or do you speak in tongues? Have you been set free? by?" And they just look at you. That don't stop me from telling somebody. I'm here today to encourage you, praise God. We're, you are living in the greatest hour you could ever live in to be a witness. How many of you sit here, raise your hand and say, God's done something for me. <clears throat> he saved me, He delivered me, He healed me, He blesses me. Every one of you was blessed today because like the old folks said, as long, I, as long as I'm on this side of the ground, I'm doing good. You got up this morning. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let me, let me talk to you. Uh, let, listen, I can, I can talk about a lot of things, but I want you to make your way over to Proverbs chapter 3. This won't, this won't be long. <clears throat> At least, I don't know. It all depends on how, what the definition of long is. Proverbs chapter 3, and then I'll pray for you. Whatever you need. This is one of the first verses that really dropped down in my heart when I read this. And his word never changes. And I can testify to you, standing in front of you, 40, somebody said, how long will all this happen? Well, I can testify that it at least worked for 46 years. I've been walking with my Jesus a mighty long time, and I'm not tired yet. I've been walking with my Jesus a mighty long time, and I'm not tired yet. I've been walking with my Jesus a mighty long time, and I'm not tired yet. No, I'm not tired yet. See, the key is keep walking. In the name of Jesus, I walk by faith. In the name of Jesus, I walk by faith. In the name of Jesus, I walk by faith. I know the just shall live by faith. See, you don't walk by sight. You walk by faith. See, when Peter saw the waves, come on, he began to sink. As long as you're walking by faith, you ignore the natural. And you just keep trusting God. So I read this. And it reads like this. In the King James Bible. King James. Everybody say King James. It's the only authorized version. If you don't believe it, look in front. It says authorized. I, I, I don't like all these different translations. I mean, you got to be careful. The Message Bible, the, you, you, you know, the, 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 the uh, you know, the new NIV, the HIV, uh -oh. Yeah, some of y'all caught that, some of you didn't. HIV, that's not a Bible translation. My son, forget not my law. Let me establish something to you that, that may help you. I've been in this thing 46 years and watch a lot of things change. Did you know there are major denominations and people who will tell you to stay out of the Old Testament? And I get a good amen. They, they, they say it's too brutal. They say it's too bloody. And, and I mean, how many of you ever had anybody tell you this? Well, that's under the law. Let me see the hand. You witness somebody you're sharing, and they say, yeah, but that's under the law. Like it's some curse word. No. The law of the Lord is 
perfect. If it wasn't for the law, none of you would be born again. Because the law shows you you're a sinner. Come on, give me a good amen. The law is not dirty. The law is great. You can't have the full blessings of God manifested in your life unless you love the law. Go read Psalms 1. And in thy law do I meditate day and night. Come on, somebody. You want to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water? Then meditate in his what? In his law. The law is great. Jesus didn't destroy the law. He fulfilled the law. You and I don't have to sacrifice bulls and goats and turtle doves and everything. He became our sacrifice. So that part of the law, he fulfilled. Uh, some, of the, uh, some, some of the ceremonial, you, you know, things that they did, we don't have to do anymore because he fulfilled it. But there are portions of the law that still apply to you and I. I'm, I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his own season. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Man, that's good news, ain't it? How many of you want to prosper in everything you do? Now, what you and I call prosperity may not be prosperity. But see, I can tell you right now, you're sitting here, you're prospering. You are blessed. He said, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. When my daughter went off the rails and was living in sin and uh, uh, living with a, with, with, with a guy who's now her husband, and because and I won't go into all the details, it is a terrible thing. But and she said, "But well, Daddy, I love the Lord." I said, "You're a liar." Now, Daddy, you know I love. I said, "You're a liar." But Daddy, why would you call me a liar? I said, "Because you are one." Jesus said, "If you love me, you'll keep my commandments." You're not keeping God's commandment. Therefore, you have believed a lie. You're deceived. You think you love God, but you're in rebellion. Somebody shout amen. You don't have to be a drug dealer or a serial killer or, or a bank robber or, or whatever. No, just be disobedient. You know, my brother just died Thursday. I came up here Tuesday and... and uh, uh, my, my, my brother died, and, and uh, I'll go back tomorrow, and then i got to go hold a memorial and, and what have you. And, and uh, so um, I've been having to deal with his daughters because he got remarried. My, my brother did. And uh, anyhow, I don't want to go into that, Lord Jesus. That, that, that's demon-possessed people and all that kind of mess. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, dying, had, I, I had to ride up there and because of, you know, two families and, and what have you in my my nieces, and, and, and Diane would have to, um, Diane's always reminded me. She said, now, David, be pastoral. I said, Diane, what if I want to be a heathen for just 30 minutes? Knock them out. Then pray for them. But you can't. We gotta walk by faith. Come on, guys. So anyhow, Pastor Bob answered, Brother David, you think your brother was saved? I said, Nope. Just because you post some kind of spiritual thing on Facebook don't make you a Christian. Um see, I'm in love with my wife, Diane. 46 years you know you know how you can tell I'm in love with my wife I like being around her even when she fusses at me I just do it at a further distance (laughs) 
because I want to spend time with her. I like looking at her. I like smelling her. I, I, I like her cooking. I like, hello, hello somebody. Well, if you're in love with somebody, I think you want to spend time with them. I think you want to be around them. And when you call yourself a Christian and you visit church, you just might need to be inspected to see if you qualify. If you keep looking at me that ugly, I'm going to make you come up here and hold this microphone. I'm going to sit out there and look at you like you're looking at me. So tell your neighbor, put a smile on your face. <laughs> if you're happy, notify your face. Take that frown off, put a smile in its place. If you love Jesus... Tell it to the human race. Well, if you're happy, <laughs> please notify your face. See, you know, a preacher can always tell when we hit somebody. You know, like if you take a rock and throw it at a pack of dogs, the only one that's going to yell is the one that hits. Right? Yep. Well, you can tell that way amongst Christians. Long as you're saying something they like, hey, boy, they're they smiling at you and nodding their head. And, you know, and they agree with me. But, but uh, you can always tell when you hit them with something they don't like, they, they do this right here. And then, and, then, and, then, and, and as you go on, they'll, they'll do this right here. They, they won't look up here. They, they'll be doing like this. So turn around to your neighbor and say, just keep looking forward. He won't know. So pray for me as I go on this journey when I get home that the Lord will touch some of them because I will not lie. I don't lie at funerals. If you ain't saved, sanctified, speaking in tongues in your sleep, don't call me to do your funeral. Hello. I know what y'all think. Thank God he don't have a church up here. <laughs> Because when's the last time you ever went to a funeral and they went to hell? There's going to be more preachers in hell than anybody else. Because they lie at funerals. Here's Bob. Here lies a good man. Excuse me? He just was released from jail three days ago for kicking his son in the head. For beating his wife once a week getting drunk and spending all the family money so they don't even have groceries. Come on, somebody. Oh, but here lies Bob. He's in a better place today. Liar! You mean, Brother David, you've actually done funerals where you told everybody out there in the family that they was in hell? Oh, yeah, it, that, that's one of the best funerals you've ever been in. This woman called me one time. She said, are you David Diamond? I said, yes, I am. She said, would you do my son's funeral? I said, ma'am, I don't even know who you are. She said, I know it. You don't know me from, from Adam. She said, but I know this. I know you, you, you will tell the truth. I said, Ann, she said, my son's in hell. He died doing drugs and, and, and robbing and hurting people. And he lost his life uh, in, in, in a gunfight the other night. Will you do my funeral? There'll be all kind of teenagers and everybody's going to come to the funeral. I said, yes, ma'am, I will. That place was packed out, big funeral home. And I got up there and there they was all tattooed up and earring wearing and, you know, and everything else. And I said, I want y'all to know I've been asked to do this funeral. And as y'all see Johnny laying here, all that is is his body. He's in hell! And let me tell you why he's in hell. You could have heard a pin drop. I want you to know about 70% 
of those kids gave their heart to Jesus right there in that funeral home when I gave an altar call. Somebody slip your hand up and shout hallelujah. So just, just pray God to give me the right words. Can I get a good amen? <laughs> my son, forget not my law, but keep his commandments. Watch this. Why would you want to do that? When I read this, I said, wow, if I'll keep his law, which is perfect, if I'll keep his commandments, which are great, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Now, you can't beat that length of days. How many of you love length of days? You know what that really means if you study it? It means every day that you live will be full. God, it'll be kind, it'll be kind of like daylight savings time. You know, fall back, but yet you gain an extra hour of sunlight in the spring. It's, it, it, it's like that. Praise God, God will lengthen my days. My days will be full. Hallelujah. Length of days and, and long life. And peace. Listen, I love walking in the peace of God. The, God's peace will surround me. I don't have to worry about anything. He has supplied all my needs according to His riches and glory by one Christ Jesus. He gives His beloved sleep. He gives His beloved rest. How many of you love a good night's rest? How many of you ever, come on, how many of you ever tossed and turned in your bed with, with, with pain in your body or, or, or torment in your mind? Or, 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 and man, you just, I mean, is that the most miserable thing you've ever uh, 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 dealt with? You, you know, if I could just fall asleep, if I could just get some rest. I mean, we've been there. Can I get a good amen? Listen, I want you to know, praise God. God will let you be saturated with peace. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. God will make your own enemies to be at peace with you. I was supposed to be fired one time. I was working at a warehouse, and they was laying people off, cutting this net, and, and, and the warehouse manager put, and he was there for, forever, and he put his own retirement and everything in jeopardy because he was supposed to lay off three more people. Guess who is at the top of the list? So the president and the, 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 the company lawyer flew down from McKeesport, Pennsylvania, down to Monroe, Louisiana, called me into the office, and make a long story short, they walked out of there without firing me. You know why? Because the warehouse manager was a backslid deacon from the Baptist church, and I had led him back to the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And God gave me favor with him, and then God gave me favor with the whole company. God will give you favor, supernatural favor. But not if you don't live in verse 1. See, we want verse one, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, and, we, and people always quote them. And they wonder why it's not coming to pass in their life. It's because you're not living in verse 1. If you want verse 2, verse 3, verse 4, verse 5, verse 6, verse, uh, uh, I, I like this one uh, uh, right here, and this is where it's going to take me. Uh, uh, in all thy ways acknowledge him, verse 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him, he shall direct thy path. And when I read it in the, in, in the New Living Bible, you know what it says? In everything you do, Put God first, and he'll crown your efforts with success. Man, I read that again, and, and I said, I said, you mean, God, I don't have to succeed? All I got to do is put forth an effort? You'll bless all my efforts? If I'm, if I'm giving my best, come on, somebody. Doesn't that make sense uh, to serve the Lord thy God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength? In other words, if you, if, if, if brother, if it's if it's concrete in your heart, all I got to do is we gonna fail. Believe me, you gonna fail. Is there any failures in here? As, and I'm talking to everybody who's been born again. Ha, have you ever have you ever tripped and fall since you've been born again? You ever made a mistake since you've been born again? You ever uh, committed sin since you've been born again? I want you to know there's nine people in here that are perfect. 
I look around, I, they, their hand didn't go out. I said, ooh, that must be an angel sitting in here. Now, I'm watching this time. See, I got you. See, I, I, see, I watch your faith. So let me ask that question again. Is everybody listening? You ready? Everybody do this. Get it loose. Get it loose. Some of, some of your arms were stiff and frozen. You was a paralytic. But here we go. How many of you sitting in here since you've been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, you sinned? That's it. I knew it. But that's all right. The Bible said a just man falleth seven times, but the Lord raises him up. Isn't that wonderful? But our part is if we'll just put forth the effort, God will bless us. Now verse 9. Oh, oh, no, i got to go on down a little bit. And all, be, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. You know where cancer comes from? From the marrow of your bones. You see, you walk in the fear of God. You walk in the goodness of God. You walk in, you walk in the scriptures. You fear God. Hallelujah. I want you to know, glory be to God, in the name of Jesus, uh, uh, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bone. You can walk in divine health. So now I, 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 I'm starting to close. And anybody's ever heard me preach, I have 15 closures. Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the what? With what? Of what? I want to talk to you for just a few minutes. Most people don't know anything about first fruits. First fruits are before tithes. Well, tithing was under the law. No, it wasn't. Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek, which was really Jesus, if you study it. But here's what I want you to understand. How many of you know God made an eternal law? And I don't have time to go into all the scriptures. It'd do you good to have a little Bible study. How many of you know the Bible talks about there'll be seed time and harvest for ever is perpetual Deuteronomy talks to me and you about the first fruits see back in the older days they didn't pay they didn't bring five dollars ten dollars hundred dollars all that they, they brought their products their their, their, their vegetables, their, their wheat, their corn. Come on. And their animals, their livestock. Come on, somebody. That's what they tithed on, but greater than the tithe was the first fruits. See, if you'll give God your first fruits, put up there Romans eleven sixteen. I believe it is. Romans eleven sixteen, Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy uh, 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 chapter twenty six. You don't have to put it up there. I'm giving y'all a Bible study. Deuteronomy twenty six, verses one through eleven, explain or teaches us about the first fruits. Romans 11.16 says this, For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Let me break that down to you in everyday language. There can't be a second or a third or a fourth without a first. If you run 21 miles you run a day, I was going to say, not anymore. You used to? Lord Jesus. 
See, I, I'd love to have you come preach for me. I'd just say, come on down. <laughs> Don't have to pay for gas, money, or nothing. Just come on down. <laughs> See, if you ran in a race by yourself, do you come in first? Yes. No, you don't. Listen, listen to it. Wasn't a, I know it's my, I'm going to ask you again. If you ran in a race by yourself, would you come in first place? No. no. Why? Ain't nobody else. And there's not a second. There's not a third. There's not. You just won. In order to have a first fruit, you've got to have a second. There's got to be a second or a third. You ever wonder, oh, you're going to love this. If the first blesses the second, you understand this? The first fruits, the spirituality of this, the truth of this, the first fruits bless everything that comes after. Y'all ain't got this. You'd say amen. You ever wonder why we worship on the first day of the week? Whether it's Saturday, you count your Saturday as a Sabbath or Sunday. We could go into some Sabbath teachings here, but for sake of time, we won't do it. I just want you to know, uh, do you sacrifice? We meet on Sunday because we consider this the first day of the week. Come on, somebody. This is our first fruits. Do we offer to God our first fruits? Why do we come on Sunday? Because if you show up on your first day, which would be Saturday or Sunday, I want you to know then God will bless your Monday. God will bless your Tuesday. God will bless your Wednesday. God will bless your Thursday. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And we wonder why we got a blue Monday. Because you stayed at home. You didn't come give God your first fruit of worship and praise come on this is good preaching it's a spiritual principle that, and, and they read it uh, and uh, 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 honor the Lord with all of thy first fruits see the Bible said talking about the first fruits you come and, oh, you love this. It's, it's in Deuteronomy because you bring it for the priest and they put it in a basket. Uh, Y'all had a basket here. And you present it to the man of God. The man of God blesses it. Hello. You're bringing your first fruits. And it's blessed. You do it on the first day of the week. The rest of your week will be blessed. And... So Deuteronomy says, of all your livestock, not only of your, uh, of your crops, which what's, that's what they lived on, that's what they offered to God, their first fruits of all their... What, but if you had livestock, and watch this, if, if the first fold of the ass was a mule, hello, then you had to redeem. You're going to get this. You had to redeem that jackass. Slip your hand up. I'm watching. Slip your hand up. You've been a jackass before. I know doggone way. You're going to love this. He said, if you got a donkey, let me, in case somebody listening on YouTube or anything, look at that, that preacher's cussing. No, ass is in the Bible. He called you an ass. You ass. Don't put this on YouTube. It's already on. Oh, my God. I, I can tell you right now, Diane ain't going to speak to me nice when I get home. That's it. We've all 
been a donkey at times. Now watch what he says. He said, you'll, you'll either redeem that donkey with an offering or you'll break its neck. How many of you know the Bible talks about stubbornness? And, 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 and a donkey is what? Stubborn. And what? Rebellious. And I promise you, every one of us, this man included standing here, has had a donkey spirit more than once. Rebellion, stubbornness. And what does it say? That's as a sin of witchcraft and idolatry. That's the reason we have prayer time. That's the reason you read your Bible. That's the reason you come to church and, and get prayer and everything else. So, Because you're bringing that stubborn spirit and that, that, that rebellious attitude. Uh, you're going to bring it to the altar, praise God, and say, God, I'm, I want this broken. Break the neck of that rebellion in my life. Break that stubbornness in my life. Lord, I'm offering it to you. Hallelujah. That was the hand I was dealt with. Uh, I, I, I didn't get a tomato plant or, 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 or cornfield or what have you, but in my livestock, Lord, I noticed uh, that amongst my livestock uh, there was a donkey. And so in, in my life, Lord, I've, I've recognized there's a donkey spirit in there and I need to bring it to this altar and I need to sacrifice it. Lord, I want you to break the neck of this stubbornness and this rebellion in my life and guess what he will <laughs> and, and we've offered praise God under the Lord everything that God has blessed us with and so therefore we walk in the newness of life therefore hallelujah my cup runneth over come on somebody you know why because I look forward to Monday because I came on Sunday. And I said, Lord, I'm bringing my first praise of the week to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, I'm bringing my first song to you. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm bringing my first obedience to you. Glory be to God. And Lord, I got a little something in my pocket that I wouldn't have there if it wasn't for your blessings. And I had an increase on my job or somebody dropped by and blessed me with something. But Lord, here's 10% of it. And matter of fact, I think I'll add a little bit to it. Hallelujah. I called an offering. Glory to God. On the first day, especially if you was ever going to give an offering if you was ever going to pay your tithes or anything else I'd make up my mind and I did it on Sunday hallelujah so that my Monday will be blessed you know I like strawberries anybody like strawberries and you know what I do when I go in there I look for that one little strawberry that's kind of going bad come on somebody I said I don't want that And I'll stand there and I'll look at all of them till I see, well, this here looks good. See, God always gives me the good strawberries. You've got to understand Proverbs. Hallelujah. See, Proverbs is the greatest book, guys, you can read. You see, everybody's got an opinion, right? About whatever. But did you know Proverbs is God's opinion? Somebody said, where should I start? I said, all, most people say, well, start in the Gospels. I said, no, start in the book of Proverbs. It tells you how to live. It tells you how to conduct your business. It tells you how to treat your wife. It tells you how to obey your husband. It tells you how to raise your kids. Oh, it's, some of it ain't nice. We don't like to read it. It's like we don't like reading that in the Bible where, where if a son or a daughter curses their father or mother, God said, I'll send the ravens to pluck his eyes out. Raising children, you know what the Bible says? Beat them. We're on YouTube. Beat them. Your rebellious kids, don't put them in a corner. Time out, Johnny. I'm going to time you out. I had four children, lost one. I didn't beat one of them to death. Don't, 
I had four. One of them died uh, naturally. Uh, I, I adopted three, and then I took in over 60 kids. And they all turned out they're not bank robbers. They're not drug dealers. They're not, uh, 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 they may be blue butts. Y'all catch that in a minute. Let me, let me slow down since I talk fast. Blue butts. The Bible teaches you how you ought to train your children. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever noticed the human anatomy? Have you ever noticed it? Watch this. Isn't that strange? Starting at the head. Now this is the front. This is the front of the body. This is the back of the body. And all of a sudden, oh, look at that. So nice. All of a sudden, oh, a mountain, a hump, a, a lump. And it's just old, it's just no fatty. Reach. No, don't reach. It's two, it's two little, two little fatty cushions. Come on. Some of us, God gave throw pillows. Other, God gave uh, double wides. Have you? Come on. And when you whoop your kids... God didn't make their head their butt. Hello? No, there's a reason God put a butt on everybody. And I'm not trying to be nasty or anything else. I, I was raised calling it a, a butt, not buttocks. If you would have said buttocks to me, I would have thought that was praising God or something. Uh-uh. But there's a place that you can correct your kids. Now my mom and <laughs> my mom and daddy wasn't Christians. But at least they knew about the buttocks. But the problem is, they always got a hold of the buttocks unless we moved. We try to run, we try to jerk around, everything. That's the reason and my mom and daddy we always use switches. Willow, willow switches. Him long, skinny, look like a whip. Of course, I, I, as I told y'all, I was a A, D, A, B, C, D, F, G child, you know. I was always trying to stir up something. My mama, she, she, she'd say, let me tell you something, boy. She said, you get out there right now and get me a switch. I said, yes, ma'am. I never said, yeah, huh, what, dude. I wouldn't be here today. Get out there and get me a switch. So I went out there. So I got a switch this long. Cut that thing off, cut it, you know. Pull the pull the knobs off of it where, you know, the, all the little branches made it smooth. Looked like a toothpick instead of a switch. I sashayed back in there. I said, I'm ready for my whooping. Oh, you little smart donkey. Y'all figure that out too in a minute. <laughs> it wasn't smart donkey, y'all, but anyhow. <laughs> she said, Oh, you little smart donkey. And I had one of them mamas. Huh? Come on. Get a hold of that ear. Hello? Twist that baby. Went out there. She said, Let me, since you uneducated, let me show you what a switch is, son. And I'm going, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
she cut one of them switches off from here, that window back there. And she did this right here, took her hand, and, and just did this just right. How many of you know there was knobs and everything else left on that switch? Huh? Little, little, little bitty. Oh, oh, yeah. Went inside. She said, lay down across that bed. And she said, when you move, every time you move or jerk, I'm adding another one to it. I went to school the next day. If they'd have strip searched me, I would have had them marks all from right here to right here with just a few down here. Because I did move a little bit. Hello. And one thing about it, my mama wasn't no liar. I moved, another lick. I want y'all to know I'm all right. I didn't grow up robbing banks. I didn't grow up full of bitterness and running away. I, I, I hadn't lived 46 years full of bitterness toward my mama because she whooped me. She kept me out of prison. Come on, somebody. And we need to get back to the biblical teaching. And you see, the book of Proverbs, Richard and I tell people all the time, read the book of Proverbs. It tells you and I how we need to conduct ourselves in our families, with our spouses, with our children, with our employers, with our neighbors. It's a wonderful, great book. And it all starts, my son, forget not my law. Keep my commandments. For this is what, if you'll do this in verse 1, here's what it'll do for you your whole life. And I can testify it's worked for 46 years. Can I get a good amen? So I want to encourage you to understand this principle about first fruit and why, listen to me, why it is so important to come to church. It's not just, well, I'm going to church. No. You need to understand why. It's the first day of the week. It's the first day that you set for the rest of your week to be blessed. That's not just, you don't just come to, you know, well, I'm going to, I like the singing and I need to go. No, 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 no. Let it settle in your heart. That's my first fruits. If I want everything else blessed, let me go to the house of God. And offer my first praise. Offer my first finances. Offer my, uh, you, you know, first talents and abilities. So then, God said, not, not me, God said, I'll make sure that the first blesses the second and the third and the fourth. Praise God, it'll carry you through a week that you're blessed, healed, happy, sanctified, hallelujah, glory to God, and can't wait for next Sunday. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. I'm coming to the Sabbath. Brother Bob, would you play me something? Bow your head, if you will. Simple question. And you know it. I don't have to. I don't plead. You know if you're born again. You know it. You know if you're a Christian. You know if you've asked Jesus to come into your life. You know it. Or... You know you're not. You've wandered away. You've... I'm a church visitor, not a church worshiper. But no matter where you've been, what you've done, and I'm sure that there's people in here, you, you love Jesus and you've messed up. You sinned. That's what I want to cover right now. You're born again. You love Jesus. You've asked God into your life. But you got weak. You failed. You sinned. As the Bible said, a just man falleth. You've fallen. But the Lord raises him up. 
If that's you, the Bible said if you confess your sin, He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and His blood cleanses you from all unrighteousness. So if there was a time this week, whatever the pressure was, you became weak and you made a mistake, but you'd like for the blood to cleanse you, just slip your hand up and say, Lord, that's me. Hallelujah. Just wash me. Make me whole right now. Thank you for doing it. Hallelujah. I'm cleansed. Or you said if I'd do it, you'd forgive me and I'll receive it right now. Take your hand up. Is there anybody here in this building today you'd like for Jesus to come into your life and become the Lord of your life, the Savior, and the one that will bless everything you do? And there is a place prepared that you can spend in eternity he said, I go to prepare a place for you. But you hadn't, you hadn't made Jesus the Lord of your life, but you'd like to. You'd like to, you'd say, preacher, I'm going to raise my hand because I want Jesus to come into my life and forgive me. I'm a sinner. But I want him to come in and cleanse me right now. And I want to start this journey in my life. I see your hand. God bless you. Would there be another hand? I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand in the back there. I see you. I see you. I see you. Hallelujah. It's a beginning. Okay, look at me. It's done. Just 10 seconds ago, you was on your way to hell. Lost. Now, because you acknowledged in your heart and you confessed by you lifting up your hand and you will, it'll come across your lips too. You said, Jesus, come into my life. I want to welcome you to the family of God. I'm glad to have sisters, new brothers. I just saw your hands go up. I, I'm glad to have you as my sister in the Lord, my, my brother in the Lord. Walk this thing out. It's not easy. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. See, the devil just lost you. You was in his family. He's going to come back and try to bring you back in. But all you got to do is, as I said in the beginning of the service, resist the devil. Say, no. Praise God. I've been born again. That person don't live here anymore. Hallelujah. I may look like that same person that used to live here, but that's just on the outside. On the inside... I'm a new creature. Hallelujah. And your life will change every day. Is anybody suffering right now in your left shoulder, kind of down your left side? Anybody here got that condition? You're basically from your shoulder down, your right side, whether it be whatever it may be. I, I, I don't know. I'd like to pray for you right now. You've, you've suffered on your left side.